He is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you touch your neighbor? Just reach over and touch him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Y'all remember when I came and I shared about the puzzle? Yes. Well, what you're doing now is everything that needs to flow Hallelujah. from one to the other is flowing by faith right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, beloved, we can't do it alone. Amen. And if we try, we're going to fail. Hallelujah. Right now, you under, when you understand the body principle, yes, yes. everything that's in the person next to you that you need is flowing to you now. Hallelujah. And everything that they need is flowing out from you now. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, receive. Hallelujah. Receive. This thing doesn't have to come out from somewhere else. What you need is in the house right now. Amen. Come on, you just need to be open to receive from that person next to you. Father, we thank you and we praise you that the body right now, greater faith, righteous growth, is edifying itself in the love of God. We thank you. We give you praise for it. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Amen. The body edifies itself. We're grateful. Amen. So, so honored to be here with you. And I'm grateful, amen, to that Pastor Ron and Juan asked me to come. And I often uh, uh, let Pastor know I. I I don't have to always be the one to speak. I'm always here yeah. for you. Uh, and it blesses me that uh, she heard and Ron asked me again, to, no, no, we want you here. And I figured they had enough of me in Canada. <laughs> but I, I thank God for you, our greater faith. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And being in a place to where Ron and Juan could travel with us. Yes. Amen. Amen. They could not do that yes. if you were not in place. Yes. Amen. And I just thank God for Blanchard Grove because I think sometimes they, they want to see me off there. Mama Sheba and them say, get on out there. Uh, but it's a blessing that we are one yes. uh, in the family. And that's uh, leading lady was talking. I tell you, I, I, I just started thinking about uh, Pastor Elton Hall and some things that he and I talked about and I was sharing with the lady uh, I can't go past one of our favorite spots yeah. uh, without just being reminded yeah. of uh, the last that we shared yeah. the years that we were able to fellowship and so I thank God for each of you the ministry in the house we honor each of you today. Uh, and I want to share with you uh, some word that will help, I think, settle us yeah. a little bit, but also challenge us, those of you that have not yet engaged God, wow. to understand the process. And I just, I'm so glad I have my, my sister here. Her birthday is today. It slipped by me. She reminded me. She looked the other way when I said that. But we thank God for her being here. And Elder, Elder Jeff and, and my cousin Barbara, you heard, might have heard them rejoicing in a different way because of an encounter they had over the weekend. And to see the power of God. Uh, deliver them. Amen. So praise be to God. Uh, Pastor, you didn't get the email, apparently. No, no, no. No. Uh, 
1 Kings. From 1 Kings chapter 18 to 2 Kings chapter 1 and 2. I want to highlight some things that took place and I want to talk to you today about the mantle. The mantle is cast. Very simple. The mantle is cast. The mantle represents authority. It represents spiritual transference of power. It represents the prophetic ministry of the Lord. Whenever you hear that word mantle, something is being transferred. Something is being recognized and set forth. But there must be a response to it. And many people who say they're in ministry who have not yet engaged it tells me that they have not yet understood the casting of the mantle. And I want to share briefly with you, uh, I know it gets dark earlier, so I promise you I'll be finished before 4 o'clock. Now some of y'all just said, did he say 4 o'clock? <laughs> I ain't going to be here that long, they said. Uh, <laughs> but in 1 Kings, I want to lay the groundwork for a minute of a prophet named Elijah. From 1 Kings chapter 18, we find that Elijah has gone through many circumstances God had reared him up for a time that for that season Elijah had gone through standing strong for God and then y'all heard of a king called Ahab you remember you, remember, you know of his wife named Jezebel All right. Elijah had just defeated the prophets of Baal. Mm -hmm. Elijah stood strong in the defense for God. Mm -hmm. yes. he, he has every one, he tells them, he said, don't let not one of these prophets escape. And he slays them all. And then Jezebel Jezebel says she sends a messenger to him. And she said, let, it, let the gods do to me tomorrow if I don't do what you did to my prophets. <laughs> now that's the message she sent. I'm just summarizing this for you so I can take you where I want to go. And Elijah takes off running. He just defeated all these false prophets. And now he's running because of the threat of Jezebel. And then God visits him. And I want to pick this up from 1 Kings 19. God tells Elijah something. He says, I want you to do something. Keep in mind what a mantle is. Elijah runs. God meets him in the cave. In chapter 19. And God tells him, I want you to go and anoint three people. One of which is Elisha. And so I want to pick up from verse 19, if that's okay. 1 Kings 19. Verse 19 says, So he departed thence, and he found Elisha, 
the son of Japheth, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Now when you understand what a mantle is, it's nothing more than an overcoat or a tunic or, or, or robe, if we can use our term in our day. It's something that you wear on top of something else. Yes. Well, from a prophet's perspective, that, that tunic, that mantle represented his authority. Yes. Yes. It represented his power. Yes. And now he walks by this unknown brother and he cast his mantle on him. Listen, y'all please hear me. This was not something Elisha was looking for. And the man of God cast this mantle, this symbol of authority, this symbol of power, he cast on him. And this is what I want to convey. If you don't get anything else that I say today, black should grow up in greater faith. When the mantle is cast on you, there is an action that automatically takes place. When you understand what has just happened to you. I'm not talking about today where people get called into ministry and all of these things. You got to pull them. You got to push them. Notice what, what Elisha's response was. Verse 20. And he what? He left the oxen. That which had his attention when the mantle was cast on him, there was no debate for him. And listen, y'all, this is the kicker. Elijah never said a word. I love this, the Lord. Ever. Elijah just walked by. <laughs> Man. How many got to be pushed and pulled to answer the call of God? Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. He just left the oxen. Wow. Elijah never said a word. Mm -hmm. Elijah was in obedience to God and what God told him. He said, I've got somebody else that I'm going to put in your room. Mm -hmm. Pastor Hall, oh, let, 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 me, let me bring it real top. Pastor Hall said some things to me about greater faith, but he had somebody in his room. Yeah. All right, man. Y'all, 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 come on, get with me now. He, he had prepared somebody to be in his state. She didn't realize it, but there was a mantle being cast. So he leaves his ox. I want you to notice what he's saying now. And he ran after Elijah. Mind you, this man had been in seminary. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, y'all be religious on that. Come on. He, he, he didn't need a board to vote on him. Yeah. When that mantle was cast on Elisha, the power that was in the mantle, the power, the authority did something to him. Oh, hallelujah. When you've been touched by the mantle of God, there's something that happens to you without anybody provoking. Amen. He just ran after him. Look at what he said. I know I'm a little excited. See, they stirred me. It's your fault, for me. And he said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father. What? Why would he ask Elijah to go back and kiss his daddy and his mom? And Elijah never told him anything. He just was obedient to God and he cast his mantle on him. 
But in that casting, in that receiving, Elisha knew my life will never be the same. Glory to God. I can listen, the relationships that I've had will never be the same. I know that based upon what God has cast on me, my relationship with mama and daddy will not. My God, my friends will never be the same. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And he didn't need Elijah to tell him. Yes. Amen. 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 The power that, that moved in obedience up through that mountain. He said, let me go back and kiss him. Because what you did to me, I know right now my days here are numb. Yes. I feel the call of God. I feel the responsibility that you. I feel it coming in my heart. This is why you and I, we cannot say we are called of God and don't respond to the casting of the man. There must be a response if you know what God just put on you. Some of you might still be trying to hold on to relationships, on, to hold on to friendships, yes. to hold on to grace yes. that God cast a mantle on you to cause you to leave. Yes. Right. It is so. Thank you, Okay, y'all look at it. It's all right. I knew Pastor was going to put it on you this morning. Come on. You still try to hold on to the wrong foe. Yeah. The mantle of God will always cause separation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right itself. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Is this too tight for y'all? Right, right. right. Mm. <laughs> Do you see anywhere where Elijah told him to do that? No. Well, no. No. The anointing that rested on him pierced his heart and he knew this is it for me. Yes. See, this is why some of you don't want to get too close to the past. If that mantle is ever cast on. We wouldn't have to have so many minister meetings. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Amen, world. Yes. <laughs> Trying to convince you of the plan of God. Yes. Ah, thank you, Father. Thank you. Okay, let me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't ready to finish this, Pastor. That's so okay. she'll preach it. She'll preach it. <laughs> Listen to this now. He says to kiss my father and my mother. Mm -hmm. And then I will follow thee. Lord didn't say the word. <laughs> I question people who say they're called into ministry. And I still see the same behavior. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm not quite sure you understand what it means. When I look at the behavior, mm -hmm. there's no change yes. that says, I understand my life just changed. Mm -hmm. Those relationships that I held on so tightly to, what was Elijah saying? I willingly yes. obey this anointing. Yes. And this is what he said. Go back again. Mm -hmm. For what have I done to thee? Mm -hmm. Elijah said, this thing is too much for you. Mm -hmm. I should have thought about your mom and daddy first. Before I cast it on you. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what he did. 
he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. This man took all that he had and threw a picnic or cookout. <laughs> he had a tailgate meeting because he knew my life as it has been is over. Now this must be hitting home because I see the fire burn. I see the wood burn. I pray that it is because you, when you understand the call of ministry yeah. and you still want to still go the same way, mm -hmm. you, have, you have not yet understood it. Yeah. There is a cost, Elisha knew it, that I'm yoked to this man for the rest of my life. I will no longer be able to hug mama on weekends. Mama, daddy, this is where you and I must separate because I have a high calling of God that's on my life. All right. Mm -hmm. yes. my God. And he left. <laughs> he went, and the Bible says he ministered yes. unto Elijah. Yes. Keep in mind. He didn't have eagles meeting like yeah. we were privileged to. Yeah. He just had a mantle cast on. Yeah. I tell people all the time of late, but now that I know more about who God is and my role in it, don't get too close to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, what, I, what I mean is, don't act like you want to get to know me because once I draw you in, and you begin to see the responsibility. responsibility. You begin to see the cause. Yes. Let me see if you won't be. Yes. All right. Amen. Because it will cause you to separate yourself without being told. Yes. How many meetings do we have over and over again to see if you caught the vision yet? Yes. Yes. Amen. And all those things are good. They are good in their place, but when someone will receive the mantle of the leadership, yes. it's something that will happen on the inside of you. Yes. You will, listen, you will go and separate from Pookie without being told. Yes. Yes. Okay, now y'all looking at me. I don't know if that's madness or anger. <laughs> Come on, you still, you still going to the same parties with Pookie. The mantle yeah. will cause you to say, hey, let, let, Pastor, Pastor Ron, why not be back? Yeah. Who can? Uh, I can't do this no more. See you. Yeah. Now, it don't mean that you don't love Pookie, but there's a higher calling. Let me give you, let me give you this again. I know I wasn't going to be able to finish this, but the mantle represents authority, uh -huh. responsibility, the transfer of spiritual power and the prophetic office. Be careful when you get close to it. I messed around and got too close to Apostle Will and Murphy. And he cast a mantle on me. Y'all may have heard me talk about this before, but he, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me months before. He spoke to me in a dream and said, Apostle Murr is going to lay hands on you. I told my wife, she said, well, do you know why I lay hands on you? I said, no. But when we were in a gathering together with all the churches coming together, when all the other apostles and prophets and ministers were around, Apostle Murray had me come up front and he spoke the, the apostolic office on my life. Yes. Yes. 
and God showed me the dream that no one else there could have laid hands on me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And not one of them laid hands on me but him. Yeah. And y'all please share me, my God, when the apostle Murray laid hands on me, I felt a chance first. There was something that jolted my thinking. And there were things that I started looking at in a way I never saw before. Amen. And now I realize what happened. That mantle was cast. Yes. Amen. And I have had a desire in my spirit that I've been expressing. And wherever I go, they said, man, you shot that I could possibly murder. It was the anointing to accomplish something that I could not do on my own. That I did not have the vision for on my own. When I look at Pastor Rod and Wanda, I, sit, I can sit sometime and I get emotional because I know where this stuff started. And I know what, what was said to me. And, I, and, and the charge that he gave me was to look out for him. Yes. Amen. Yes. And to see the growth and the listen to Pastor Wanda and Ron could have went anywhere else. Yes. Yes. But they didn't. Hallelujah. And I truly believe it was because that pastor Hallelujah. cast a mantle yes. <coughs> that kind of reaffirmed yes. where they were to go. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Father. Now hear me. Now if you're going to have a mantle cast on you. You have to be willing to not be seen. Yes. All right. If you read the scriptures from 1 Kings 19 to 2 Kings chapter 1 and 2, Elisha's name is never mentioned. His name is never mentioned again. Because once he came back to Elijah, his place was to sit, sit there and be quiet. Yes. Listen. Learn from it. Yes. Watch it. Yes. How many of y'all really watching your past? Mm. Without so much talking. Yeah. Without needing to be recognized. Elisha is never mentioned again for years. Yes. He walked by Elijah's side learning from him. Mm -hmm. Watching how God would move through his life. Watching how he prophesied. Yes. He got a chance, and I just want to name a few things that he saw. He had a chance to witness this man of God when Ahab and Ahab, Ahab, first of all, he got, he went in Nabal's vineyard, so Jezebel has him killed. Yeah. God speaks to Elijah, say, go tell him. Yeah. He's going to die. Guess he was right there watching it all. Elijah. Elisha watched this man have a company of 50 soldiers come trying to kill Elijah. Uh -huh. And Elijah says, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume. Yes, yes, well, this king wasn't smart enough. He wasn't that bright because he sent another 50. And they came and they wanted to kill him. And he said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume him. <laughs> the king still wasn't too bright. <laughs> he sends another 50. But this 50, when they came and saw Elijah, they fell down on their knees. Oh, yeah. oh, right now. Say, have mercy. Look, we don't need to see another 50 die to know that you're a man of God. Yeah. 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 Elisha is never mentioned. 
but he was right there yes. as a witness to what God was doing in this man's life. Mm -hmm. The mantle is cast on him, but yet he's not in ministry. Mm -hmm. How many of you called in ministry and ready to go start your own church? <laughs> You're in ministry and the pastor won't let you up to preach. Okay. All right. Amen, Wall. If I can't get one, I'm going to look to the wall. No one's ready to just listen, to witness. They feel the call. And he's just ready to go. This man for years watched Elijah. He didn't have to be seen. Yeah. He didn't have to be heard. Mm -hmm. He just watched him. And in the appointed time, Hallelujah. when God was ready to take him, can I get that second case? First Kings in Second Kings, yeah. Here Elijah is. He takes his mantle, he wraps it up, and y'all read this. I know you know this. And he smites the water, and he he and Elisha walks across. Mm -hmm. Elisha's watching him. Now, before this moment. And you can go back and see, everybody tried to discourage Elisha from following. Yes, uh -huh. Why wouldn't he listen? Why, when we get, well, listen, we get folk to discourage us from following somebody like that. Yeah. But he had walked with Elijah for years. He had watched how God used him. And he stayed close to him. And the one recurring phrase he kept saying was, as the Lord living and as your soul living, I will not leave you. Yes. He wouldn't leave. And he had the prophets telling him, your master is going to be taken from you. He said, hold your peace. Yes. Mind you, now, Elisha has not been seen or heard from for years. Now his name is mentioned again. Listen, listen he, he wrapped them up. They were divided hither and thither, so they too went over on dry ground. Next slide. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away. From thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Here's the question, greater faith, blank of growth. How did he know how to ask for a double portion? What would make him ask that question? Because he had seen him. He had lived with this man. Yeah, yeah. He watched God use him. And he said, I want a double of what God did in your life. All right, All right now. I said, why would he know to ask that question? Because he had been there. Yes. Mm -hmm. He had watched him. And he said, that's what I want. How many of y'all want their spirit? Mm -hmm. Because if you, take, if you take on their spirit, you won't be home Saturday morning watching cartoons. Yes. Yes. When they're working, oh Lord. Yes. Yes. What am I saying? For the church, for, for greater faith to continue to expand, for black to grow, to continue to expand, somebody, somebody. has got to pick up this spirit. All right. Yes. If it resides on me and my wife, then black grow grow will die out. Absolutely. If it just remains on these two, then it will die. And Pastor Hall knew that. Yes. All right. Hallelujah. Mm. He knew that in times of transition, somebody's going to have to get it. Thank mm. you. And you think about that. When you think about the family, the sons, and all yes. this stuff. But 
This was the one he cast the mantle on. Yes. Didn't, doesn't take away from anybody else. Yes. Amen. Amen. But that's the one who had his spirit. Hallelujah. Do you really want your pastor's spirit? Notice what Elijah asked. He didn't ask for God's spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. I want Y'all see what it says? A double portion of your spirit. Amen. Because God responds to you. God moves through you. Y'all. Amen. We're going to have to understand this. Yeah. If if pastors, pastors of this house is constantly pushing and pulling, that means you have not yet understood the mantle that's on you. Mm -hmm. Because the mantle that's on you will cause you to not to distance yourself from that leadership. Yes. Yes. What happened to Elijah? He ran to him. Yes. He didn't run away from the cost of it. Amen. And when the time came, when Elijah, Elijah was separated by God, Elijah went up, he cried, my master. And guess what happened? He could have dropped the sandals or anything, but the mantle fell back down. And Elisha picked it up. Now here's the point I want to make with that. The prophets at Jericho were watching. Yeah, that's right. They wanted to see did he receive of Elijah's spirit? And he picked the mantle up. Give me that slide. Is this up there? Next slide, please. Keep going for me. Right there. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, mm -hmm. the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his clothes and rent them in two pieces. Next slide. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah, not something new. Come on, some folk always trying to give you something new that fell from him, and he smote the waters and said, Where is the God of Elijah? <clears throat> and when he had also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah does rest on Elisha. And they came, come on, to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. God is not in the business of bringing some new spirit through. Yes. We pierce ourselves through with many sorrows because we feel like the God of eternity can't operate during different seasons. The same spirit was operating on Elisha's life. Mm -hmm. And there's always someone right now been watching Greater Faith to see yes. would she operate like Pastor yes. Hall? All right, yeah. Yes. And I think Pastor said that from the beginning, Greater Faith, you, you will never be Pastor Elton Hall. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what the first lady was to get. Yes. But the same spirit. Yes. yes. That loves God, that operates with excellence, will still be in the house if the mantle 
was killed. And then she said, everything must be built upon. Because we never removed the landmark of the fathers. All right. Yeah. All right. If greater faith is going to move in this next dimension of this season, Hallelujah. it needs people who are willing to receive the mantle. Yes. Understanding that that mantle will draw you close to that leader yes. and not put distance between. All right. It's costly. Yes. And I, and I say to you, every minister in the house, those of you that have a calling on your life, if you do, mm -hmm. they draw close. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Not with your spirit. Yes. Amen. Receive from the leadership. Mm -hmm. Because God is still a God of order that's working from the head down. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the mantle must be received is again the transference of power mm -hmm. and authority. What did Jesus do when he wanted to transfer? He spoke to his disciples and said, y'all go out. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you're going under my mantle. Yes. In my name. Yes. The mantle is cast. Will there be a response? Mm -hmm. Or will we continue to operate as usual, or will we draw close like Elisha did mm -hmm. and say, I've got to see what this leadership is doing. Mm -hmm. I've got to hear what God is speaking through this headship. The reason why you do that is so that it can be multiplied yes. and continue to expand. Amen. Neither one of these ministries will ever be any more than it is if somebody doesn't say, I've got to draw close enough to them so that I can receive and do my part in this. Yes. Thank you, Father. I still got to go through Samaria, but I can't get there. Yes. Amen. Without somebody going. Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus said, didn't he? I've got to go into Samaria. Yes. Mm -hmm. He never set foot there mm -hmm. on his own. He had a woman that picked up the mantle yes. and went in for him. Ah. Yes. Oh, come on, saints yes. of God. Yes. Don't you know that new scene? No, Jesus said, I gotta go. But all he did was meet this woman at the well and begin to tell her about her life. And she went into the city. Yes. Amen. 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 So Jesus never went there physically, but he went through her. Yes. Amen. Amen. You understand? That's the, that's the order of ministry. That's how great a faith in Blanchard Grove is going to accomplish the vision. It's when somebody else picked it up. Yes. Amen. 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 And not operate on your own independently. And be willing to be told, no, don't go. Stop. Amen. Uh -huh. who, are, who are not so impressed with you yes. to tell you when you're old. Yeah. Amen. Yes. No, no, baby, that's not my spirit. Mm -hmm. If you're arrogant, and yeah. you are, you, if you're arrogant, I'm gonna put this one out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you tell people you connected to me. Yes, that's right. People that know me say, uh oh, that's she right. didn't get that from him. Amen. All right. That's right. He didn't get that spirit. Yeah. Amen. What are they? What are they identifying? It? Because there is a transfer. Yes. Yeah. Once you say you're connected to someone. Yes. Yeah. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Can you receive the cast another mantle? Amen. Amen. Because no one does this alone. But yet you can't do it without it flowing through the leadership. That doesn't make the leadership better than you. God always starts with someone. And then he expands. Amen. He chose 12 men to cast his mantle on and he turned the world upside down. Yes. What would he do with a house full? Oh. Amen. Father, I thank you and I give you praise for the casting of the mantle in this season. Yes. I pray, God, that every person under the sound of my voice will understand and recognize 
that you have placed leadership in place to where, Lord, you can pour out upon them to empower them, to give them direction, give them the wisdom that they need to expand on your plan. Yes. That no one does ministry alone. Yes. That is always about your mantle being cast yes. and someone receiving it. Being able to learn of the spirit from which it came and operate in like manner. I thank you, Lord, for greater faith 16 years. Enduring the highs, the lows, the times of uncertainty. You alone brought them this far. I thank you for the leadership that's here now. How, Lord, you've chosen them to cast the mantle on, to expand upon that which had been done to Pastor Elton Hall and leading lady Mary Hall. The work continues because the mantle has been cast. It may run and wander, Lord. Find those two, like Elisha, that they can cast the mantle upon that this ministry will continue to expand to fulfill your purpose and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, when it comes to just being a mantle cast, it's such a serious thing. Yes. Yes, and um, when you love Jesus, it's that confirmation that you want to receive. Yes. And, you, and you do. When you feel, I remember when, before I been married, Apostle, and I remember when I heard the word. Yeah. And in hearing the word, that's all I wanted to do was follow. Yeah. You know, um, he hadn't cast no mantle on me. <laughs> <laughs> especially through here. Yes. And it started here yes. in the other ministries. Because um, I know we went through certain things with when we first got to Atlanta. Yeah. But yeah. it started here to welcome the, the your father. Yes. It was a blessing. Yeah. I remember in 16 years, and that's when I first had the twins. The yeah. twins, twins are 16. Mm -hmm. And I remember I couldn't be here as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it was a season, too, that was that was different. Yeah. You know, and I knew that things were happening. It was great, but he was excited about yeah. it. And I, and I was watching the excitement from both ministries coming together. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I just wanted to yeah. encourage our family, our yeah. church family, because yeah. um, y'all are our church family. Absolutely. Yeah. That um, it is a great thing. And I think, I know, it's gonna, I'm just waiting for it. Ex great God's expectations. Yes. And, 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 and just a fellowship yes. and being together. Amen. 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 Real quick. Saints of God, God is resetting the bones in this season. Yes. And to do that, we really need some serious people. 
and not doing ministry when you want to, but doing ministry because you sense that mantle on you. And Elon, think about what Elisha did. He, he, he gave a cookout to everybody that he knew, and he left them. His life was never the same. If you're really looking to do ministry, if we're going to reach what Pastor Ron and, and Juan are talking about in, in, in Blanchard Grove, we need people who are saying, I'm willing to give up my life for this. That's why it's going to cost all of us. Amen? Because if we're going to reset the boat, we need somebody to go do it. I shared with the church this morning, listen, not everybody's going to be in ministry at the, in the pulpit. Yeah. There's ministry behind the scene. Yeah. I, and I use the example, listen, I'll go down the well, but I need somebody up holding the rope. Yeah. And so that's a, that's a ministry in itself too. Amen. Father, we thank you for this blessed house, for this people. I thank you for the faithful saints of Blanchett Grove that showed up today to encourage and to strengthen. Lord, I thank you and give you praise because we can only do ministry to those that will follow. And we just bless your holy name. Thank you for all that you're going to launch from this house for your glory. Thank you for those ministries that will knit themselves to Pastor Ron and Wanda to further the vision to continue to help reset the bones throughout the body of Christ. We thank you for it. Thank you for this blessed fellowship. Thank you for the meal we're about ready to receive. May it be nourishing for our bodies in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we ask that you go before us and your goodness and mercy follow us in Jesus' name. Amen. Love on your name.